All right, everybody. <clears throat> Let's do practice problem number two for homework number 10. Okay, so as usual, we start by restating the problem. So we have a surface, a solid surface, and there is some irradiation, which we will call G, that's hitting our surface. And then our surface is also emitting, and we'll write that as E, the emissive power. So we have a surface with irradiation hitting it, and it's emitting radiation. Uh, now, we have a specific irradiation profile that's been given to us. We'll see if my pen behaves today. So this isn't any irradiation, this is spectral irradiation. In other words, it changes with wavelength. And we've been given a plot of what that spectral irradiation looks like. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here's the wavelength and here is the spectral irradiation. <clears throat> so what we know is it's zero from wavelengths of zero to two and then it jumps up to 0.6 and is 0.6 after that. So that's how the irradiation changes with wavelength. So this irradiation is coming in and it's got these, this wavelength dependence. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's late. This is not the irradiation profile. This is the apparent absorptivity spectral, the spectral apparent absorptivity profile. So this is the absorptivity of our surface for each individual wavelength. In other words, any wavelength hitting our surface between zero and two, it absorbs nothing or zero. And then any irra irradiation between two and six, it will absorb 0.6 of that irradiation. Okay, so that's our irradiation, pro our absorptivity profile, but then we've also been given an irradiation profile. Oh my gosh. My pen's really struggling today for some reason. Okay, so uh, we know that the peak emission is the peak irradiation is at 5,000, and that's spread out over a few different wavelengths. We've got a two, a four, and we're actually gonna extend this a little further, and six. So our irradiation profile looks like this. Okay, so <clears throat> again, this is our spectral irradiation. Uh, so that means the irradiation at specific wavelengths. So from zero to two, we ramp up until we hit 5,000. Then from two to four, we have a constant 5,000 watts per meter squared per micrometer, so per wavelength. And then it decreases again to zero once we hit six. So again, this is the spectral irradiation. So this is the irradiation, <clears throat> but at specific wavelengths, and you see it changes. Um, and so now we've been asked to find some specific things. First, we need to find alpha, which is the total hemispherical absorptivity. And then we need to find emissivity being the total hemispherical emissivity. Okay, and then finally we need to find Q net rad as a flux. Q net rad is the total uh, the net heat transfer in or out of our surface. So in other words, if we add up everything that's entering and being absorbed, so some percentage of this will be absorbed, and then we account for everything leaving, then the difference between these two will tell us the net rate of heat transfer. So if this is greater than this, then our net rate is energies being absorbed by the surface. 
if this is greater than this, then our net rate is the energy is losing energy to the surroundings. <clears throat> okay, so that's our problem statement. So our next thing we do is we write our approach. Okay, so we're going to use definitions that we learn in class, which is that the total hemispheric absorptivity can be defined as a function of the spectral hemispheric absorptivity, which is what we've been given. And that definition looks like this. So it is <clears throat> the spectral absorptivity multiplied by the spectral irradiation integrated over all wavelengths divided by the integral of the spectral irradiation integrated over all wavelengths. So that's how we're going to find the total hemispherical absorptivity. The total hemispherical emissivity uh, looks very similar. We're going to integrate over all wavelengths the spectral emissivity multiplied by the black body spectral emissivity, emissive power from our surface. And we're going to divide by that by the total hemispherical emissive power from a black body. And so that's going to tell us, again, these are just ratios. Absorptivity tells us how much energy is actually absorbed divided by the total energy incident on the surface. Total hemis hemispherical emissivity tells us how much energy is actually emitted, being the emissive power of a black body scaled by how closely our surface approximates a black body, divided by the total emission from a black body. Uh, so yeah, we'll go to that point. We also always need to draw our control volume, which for this problem, the control volume that makes the most sense is just the top of the surface because we've got this irradiation coming in and then we have radiation leaving and the balance of those two will tell us Q net rad as a heat flux. Okay, so now let's actually do it. We start with part A, which is to find the total hemispherical absorptivity. Okay, now like I showed right here, that is just equal to the integral over all wavelengths of our spectral absorptivity times our spectral irradiation divided by the integral of our spectral irradiation over all wavelengths. <clears throat> Okay, now something uh, to note here is that this depends on our spectral irradiation profile. So that means what we're going to find, this alpha we're asked to find, will be specific to not just this spectral absorptivity, which would be the characteristic of the material, so this would be a material property, it also depends on the irradiation hitting the surface. So this doesn't depend on the material, right? This is what's hitting it. So if this were to change, like say be capped there, or look more like a triangle, then this would change as the irradiation changes. Even if nothing on the surface changes, if the irradiation hitting the surface changes, then our alpha will change. All right, I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so to really do the math, what we're going to do is break this up, this top part, into three different integrals. So first, we're going to do an integral from 0 to 2, 2 microns. And now, the reason we're doing that is alpha right here is a constant between 0 and 2, a constant of 0. So because it's a constant, it comes out of this integral. So we have the spectral absorptivity between 0 and 2. Um, oh my goodness. Integrated by the spectral irradiation um, over the wavelengths. So now we're going to add that to, again, the next range, which goes from 2 to 4. And again, from 2 to 4, the spectral absorptivity is constant. And so it comes out of that integral, and we're just left the, with the integral of the spectral irradiation between 2 and 4. Finally, between 4 and 6, 
again, the spectral absorptivity is constant, right? It looks like this, just to draw it again where we can see it. The spectral absorptivity, 0.6, here's two. Um, that's really only the one we need. So it looks like this, right? So it's a constant between all these different ranges we're looking at. So it comes out of our integral, which is integrating over wavelength. So because it's a constant, um, it just comes out of this integral. Okay, so we've rewritten this first integral over all wavelengths as three different integrals uh, between zero and two, two and four, and four and six. The bottom integral we can also rewrite as from zero to six of the spectral irradiation. And we can rewrite it like that <clears throat> because as we see up here, the spectral irradiation only grows from zero to six. So we could integrate from zero to infinity, but it stops at six, so there's no point in continuing on. <laughs> Okay, so let's plug in actual numbers. So first, this one right here from zero to two, our absorptivity is zero. So that whole term is zero. Okay, next, between two and four, our absorptivity is, gosh, this is driving me nuts. Our absorptivity is 0.6, and our irradiation is a constant value, right? So it actually would come out of the integral two, it's 5,000, and we're only left with <clears throat> the integral of d lambda from 2 to 4, which is just equal to 4 minus 2, or 2. So we just have to multiply this by 2. Okay. Our last one, again, the spectral absorptivity is 0 0.6. Again, so now our irradiation, however, isn't a constant. Um, but we can, remember, we're just trying to take the area under the curve, right? Between 4 and 6 of this function. And so that's a triangle. Uh, one way we could find it is just by finding the area of this rectangle and dividing by 2. So that's, again, just... 5,000, sorry, 5,000 times 2 divided by 2, which leaves you only with 5,000. Okay, now we need to do the integral of over all wavelengths of our g function. So that would be the area under this whole entire curve, which specifically is just telling us the total amount of irradiation incident on the surface. All right, so we'll actually redraw this. Well, where do we go? We'll redraw this right here so that we can um, kind of add that up in our heads a little bit easier. So here's two, here's four, here's six. It looks like this. Okay, so the easiest thing is first look at this box, which is 5,000 high, and it's two wavelengths wide. So that would be 10,000. And we're gonna add that to, again, this triangle, which is equal to the area of this rectangle, which is the same, right? It's two wide and 5,000 tall. So 10,000, but we have to divide by two because we only want the area of the triangle. So that's another 5,000. <clears> then <throat> we add one more 5,000 because that's the area of this triangle. Okay, so we've got a final expression. We can add that all up and we're going to get, let me just make sure that's right. Yep, 0.45 for our total hemispherical absorptivity, or the total percentage of irradiation we will absorb from a surface. I mean, I mean, the total percentage of irradiation our surface will absorb coming from um, the irradiation. Okay, so next, we need the total hemispherical emissivity, 
which again we wrote is the integral over all wavelengths of our spectral emissivity times our black body emissive power, spectral emissive power, integrated over all wavelengths divided by EB, which just so we don't get confused, is the same as the integral of our black body emissive power integrated over all wavelengths. Okay, <clears throat> so we need to rewrite this um, in terms of things that we know. So let's do that thing again where first we have to recognize, and this we won't cover until <clears throat> Tuesday's lecture, that we can say these two things are the same. And that's Kirchhoff's law. We'll get to that on not this next lecture, but the lecture after. And so because we can say those are the same, we can use our same um, spectral absorptivity profile, the one that looks like this. But instead of spectral absorptivity, we can write spectral emissivity. <coughs> hmm. Okay. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did before, which is break our integral over all wavelengths into chunks. We're going to integrate from 0 to 2 of our spectral emissivity, so like this. And we'll add that to our integral now from 2 to infinity of our spectral emissivity. Oops, that was my bad. <laughs> and the whole thing's gonna be divided by the emissive power of the black body. Okay, so let's do that. So first, this one, from zero to two, our, emiss our emissivity, our spectral emissivity is zero. This term is zero, so that whole term becomes zero. Okay, now, here from two to infinity, our spectral emissivity is a constant at 0.6. So it comes out of the integral. And we're left with the integral from 2 to infinity of the spectral emissive power. And that is divided by the black body total hemispherical emissive power. Okay, so that leaves us with 0.6 times 2 to infinity of the spectral emissive power of our black body divided by the total hemispherical um, emissive power of our black body. So this right here, you will recognize as the fractional function from 2 to infinity being the fraction of our emission that is in the range of interest, 2 to infinity, divided by the total emission. So it's our fractional function. From 2 to infinity, obviously we can't do <clears throat> from 2 to infinity. So instead, what we're going to do is say, well, that's the same as the fractional function from 0 to infinity minus the fractional function from 0 to 2. And you say, well, how do we find the fractional function from 0 to infinity? Well, the fractional function from 0 to infinity would be the total hemispherical emissive power. In other words, that has a value of 1. So all we have to do is find the fractional function from 0 to 2. Uh, so our wavelength would be 2. The temperature of our surface actually is already given. I believe it is 1,000 Kelvin. So we multiply those together and get 2,000 Kevin, Kelvin, not Kevin. And then using table 12.2, we look up the fractional function, which is 0 0.0667. Okay, so our total hemispherical emissivity is 0 0.6 times 1 minus 0 0.0667. And when you run those numbers, you get 0 0.56. Okay, so that's the total energy, I'm sorry, that is 
essentially the ratio of the energy emitted from our real surface compared to the energy that would be emitted from a black surface. All right, so that leaves us with part C, specifically what is Q net rad or <clears throat> is our surface losing or gaining heat and at what rate? Okay, so this would simply be equal to the rate of absorbed energy minus the rate of emitted energy, right? So if we draw our surface, we've got some irradiation coming in. Some of that is absorbed. And then our surface is emitting irradiation, uh, emitting radiation. And so we can say Q net rad, which is the balance of the two, is going to be equal to what is absorbed, specifically this, minus what is emitted. Okay, uh, but is there a different way we can write what is emitted? Because we don't necessarily know E, but we know the emissivity, the total hem hemispherical emissivity, and then we could write what the emissive power is for a black body because we know an equation for that, the Stefan-Boltzmann law. So we use the Stefan-Boltzmann law like that to compute the emissive power of a black body and then we scale it by our total hemispherical emissivity that we calculated. Okay, so we found alpha already, that was 0.45. And then G is the total incident irradiation. In other words, that would be adding up all of our spectral irradiation, which we actually have already done um, earlier on the bottom of our alpha equation. And I believe we got, oh my goodness. 20,000 watts per meter squared. So we're going to put that in right over here. We're going to subtract that from our emissivity, 0.56, times sigma, times the temperature of our surface, 1,000 Kelvin to the fourth. All right, when you do all that math, you get minus 22,751 watts per meter squared. Okay, so the question you gotta ask yourselves is, well, which way is heat going then? Uh, we see here that absorbed in our equation was defined positive and emitted was defined negative. In other words, we had said positive absorbed minus emitted. So if we ended up with a negative number, that means that heat is leaving our surface. Okay, well, that is practice problem number two. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope this is making some sense. Radiation is a little confusing, but you can do it. <laughs>